Hello, this is Barry, KU3X. The other day I made a video showing you how to use the Nano VNA and you would check balance and you're looking for how much attenuation it offers and you can also check for inline losses in attenuation in DB. Uh, and now you, I also mentioned for antenna switches. Well, today we're going to check an antenna switch. So for right now, we're using a Nano VNA and it's strictly as an antenna analyzer for starters. In other words, we're only using channel zero, just like you would any other antenna analyzer. So what we'll do is we'll connect that wire there and we'll put it on through and we're going to check that port. And this is a BNC 50 ohm terminated load. This is highly accurate. This is 50.0 ohms, right on the money. I got that special. So now what we have on 160 meters, let's zoom in here. On 160 meters, what we have is for SWR insertion, in other words, if your antenna is 1.00 to 1, you would add this number to it. So right now it's 1.003 to 1. Well, that's nothing. That's negligible. So let's move up the band a little bit till we start getting a reading. And here we are at uh, 58 megahertz. Let's go down a little just so we get in a six meter band. Here's 51 megahertz. Now the insertion is 1.01 .01 to one. Again, negligible. Now we'll go up a little higher. Let's go right to two meters. Now at two meters, the insertion is 1.12. Actually, 1.13 will round off the next number. 1.13 to 1. That's really nothing. And actually, if you think of it, these SO239s, let's go back out. These SO239s are, are not 50 ohm uh, connectors. They're about 25 to 35 ohm, depending on the manufacturer. So you have what's called an impedance pump. But it's so small, it doesn't make any difference. So do you really need an end connector to get on two meters? No, not really. Uh, if you're adding bricks up and you have 30 connectors till you get out to your moon bounce antenna, yeah, things start adding up and then you may want to do uh, end connectors. But for right now, these UHF connectors, they work great up to two meters. Don't waste your money and go out and buy end connectors. So now what we want to see is how much, how many dB of insertion comes in line when you put the switch in. So now what we're going to do is check for insertion. So now we're going to go into 30 megahertz, but now what we're going to do is take this off and we're going to connect channel two to the, uh, to the, to the switch. And right now it's straight through. So we're going to read how much attenuation is by the switch. So for right now, let's see, where are, we'll go all the way down the bottom. So on 160 meters, it is 0 0.01 dB of loss going through the switch. Well, that's nothing. <laughs> that doesn't mean anything. So let's go up to a, let's go up to 10 meters. Let's go up to past, let's go to six meters. There's six meters. 0 0.01 dB, again, nothing. Now we go up to two meters and now we get some insertion. Now the, S, the, the dB of attenuation is a quarter of a dB, 0.25 dB of attenuation. That's not even, that's only a quarter of a dB. Again, that's nothing. So now the next thing we want to check is isolation between ports. Now isolation between ports is, let's switch this, is you have two radios. 1500 watts here and 1500 watts here and this radio is going to be turned off this one's going to be turned on so that's connected to the antenna and let's say you have an OCF 160 that's good 6 10 12 17 20 40 80 and 160 one antenna does all but you have two stations now the problem is you're putting 1500 watts here and you want to know is it going to do damage and feed through and damage this radio well we're going to find out so to find that out, we're going to check for isolation between ports, and that's by doing this. Now we're going to see how much isolation between ports, how much RF is being shown here. Now what you want to do is you would like to get it down to what's referred to as 0 dBm, 0 0.001 watts. 
Uh, that's the re that's as much power as you ever want to put into a spectrum analyzer. Zero dBm, 0 0.001 watts. Any more than that, you'll blow the you'll blow the uh, spectrum analyzer. So now we want to see will we damage the radio. So to go from 1500 watts down to zero dBm, the signal has to be suppressed by 62 dB, 61.9 to be exact. So 62 dB. So if the signal's down 62 dB, you're down to 0 dBm, it's not going to damage anything. With the radio, you can go a little higher than 0 dBm, but I always use that for a benchmark, and, and that's a good mark to go by. You'll never do damage to a radio. So what do you really have? So at, one, at 160 meters, the, the attenuation is down 75 dB. Well, we know we can use this switch, 1500 watts going into one and not affect the radio on the other side. Now let's start going up a little bit. Let's see where we get above. Okay, we're still at 39 megahertz. We're still down 72 dB. This is good. So on HF, we can use it. Let's go to six meters. And on six meters, here is six meters, it's down 69 dB. So we can still use this, 1,500 watts, two radios on six meters. And as we start going up in frequency, let's go right to two meters, because there's nothing in between for us. Now you're down 57 dB. Now you have a problem. Now you can't put 1,500 watts in with the radios, 1,500 watt in the one port and the other port. That's too low. Now you're above zero dBm. But up to six meters, this switch is good. And uh, I, I, I use these things all the time. Again, you don't need end connectors on that. So now we know what that switch is like. So now what we want to do is we're going to check a little homemade switch I have. And I use this one when I set up for portable in the park. I wanted to check, excuse me, I wanted to check two different antennas. And I don't want to take the connectors on and off. So when you look at this little guy here, all it is, is just a, a regular electrical mini toggle switch. That's all it is. BNC connectors, one, two, three, and it's point-to-point -point wiring. Inch and a half, 18 gauge wire going here. The same going from the switch to this one. So as much as you think, boy, this is poor quality just running wires like that. Is it really? Well, let's see how bad it is. We're going to go backwards. We're going to check for insertion. Uh, attenuation rather and isolation between ports we're gonna do that for first so as far as the losses in the switch let's see what we have for losses so we're down at 3.9 megahertz let's go down further let's go down to 160 meters so there's 160 meters losses 0 0.01 DB well that's nothing let's go higher till we get a little bump now there's a change now there's 43 megahertz that's 0.14 dB of loss. That's an eighth of a dB of loss at 43 megahertz. So now let's go up to six meters. It'll probably be the same. Six meters, 0.17 dB of loss. That's nothing. Now we're gonna start to go up, and this is two meters. Excuse me, so on two meters, it looks like point. It's like 0 0.09, 0 0.1. Yeah, it's not as bad. It starts changing. It's still good. So it's not a big deal for loss when it comes to on the HF band. Now here's where it comes into play. Now we're going to go isolation between ports. Now what you see isolation between ports. On 1 megahertz, it's down 74 dB. Let's go to, there's 160 meters. It's down 71 dB. Now let's go up a little bit. I passed 40 meters. Uh, there's 40 meters, 57 dB down. Well, you never put 1500 watts into this anyway. It's not designed for that, but that's 57 dB, dB down. Now you could run two 100 watt radios into this. Now for 100 watts, you need to be down 50 dB. So let's see what we have. Let's see when we hit 50. So on 10 meters, 10 megahertz, it's 54. All right, here's your breaking point for a 100 watt radio. F 15, 
15.5 megahertz, it's down 50 dB. So that's, that's the most you want to do. But you can still use for antennas because the antenna is not getting 100 watts. But let's keep going anyway and see what those two parallel wires do in there because what you're doing is you're capacitively coupling from one port to the next. So let's see what it's really like just out of curiosity. So there's 6 meters right there, 38 dB down. And then when you go up to 2 meters, <clears throat> excuse me, Here's 144 megahertz. Now you're only down 29 dB. So there's where the problem comes in. And uh, that's because the wires are parallel with one another. These wires are parallel and are capacitively coupling. So you're coupling RF over to the other one. So now let's check and see what we have as far as SWR insertion. That uh, would be this guy. Recall. Come on. There we go. And stimulus, let's go up to uh, stop 144 megahertz. All right. So let's, let's see what we have. So now what we want to do is, let's see, that's that. Now we want to put that terminated load on here. Okay. Come on. Where are we? Oops, I, oh, I got the wrong wire on. So sorry. I knew I did something wrong. And <laughs> I getting a reading. All right. So now what we're looking at, and what we did, see, here's going straight through over to here. Here's that 50 ohm terminator I put on there. Now, SWR insertion on this switch. So for 160 meters. 1.8 megahertz. The SWR insertion is 1.03. Round it off because it's a 5, 1.04. That's not bad at all. Now let's go up to the 10 meter band. And on 10 meters, 1.149. So if your SWR is 1.0 to 1, now it's going to be 1.149 to 1. If it's 1.5 to 1, now it's 1.649 to 1. So the insertion on this for SWR really isn't that bad. But as you start going higher, up to 2 meters, now what you have for insertion is, uh, that's 142, there's 144 megahertz. Now the insertion is 1.6 to 1. So that's pretty bad for insertion. I, you know, I, I wouldn't really want to use that in two meters, could you? Yeah, it won't hurt anything, but it's not a good switch for two meters. For, but for HF, it's not bad. Now, last comment before I sign is I showed you that these guys were good switches, okay, for isolation between ports. The switches you don't want to use are the ones from Barker Williamson and MFJ, they're the old wafer type switches. Those guys are terrible. You're gonna have a lot of RF coupling. You wanna stick with something like a Dewa or an Alpha Delta. I didn't, base per I didn't personally test an Alpha Delta, but they're supposed to be pretty good too. But this is the way to test it, and now you can do it yourself. So that's it from KU3X. I hope I helped you, and you can check your switches and see how good, see how bad they are. 73, did it, it, ah, did, ah.